one thing, I, I know the Rich talks, has talked a lot about the ballot initiative. It's, it's going to be on the ballot this year. Um, kind of gauging student dependent, how do you feel about your representation in the budget planning council? This is going to be another two-tiered, ungraceful combination of questions. But with that said, the question is, um, first of all, um, do you think the budget planning council and other budget planning units adequately represent students currently? Um, and second, for the presidential candidates, in the current setup, you will sit on the budget planning council. Um, so whether you like the representation or not, you will be the representation next year, if elected. Um, what kind of budget management experience do you have? Um, what type of university budget experience do you have? Well, university budget is pretty complicated. Um, and, and how do you see yourself functioning in that role? Um, let's start with Jared. So um, to be perfectly frank about what kind of budget experience I have, especially in the university, uh, not that much. And that's something I have to, I'd have to work on. I it's room for improvement for myself. That being said, uh, if I was to sit on DPC by being student senate president, uh, one of the things that comes with uh, being one of the few student representatives, because I'd like to see more, but right now there aren't that many, and I'd be one of the few. And that means that you have to be an even more aggressive representative for student interest. Um, student Senate, I've said this before, um, is the only institution on this campus that has a direct student, so hire the board of trustees and things of that sort. Uh, because of that, uh, we have to sort of make up for that lack of it <coughs> by being the incentive for everyone else. We're saying that we won't back down when the students say no, we do not want another tuition rate. And honestly, next year, they're probably going to try to raise tuition again. It's just a historical trend. And it doesn't matter if we have like Republicans or Democrats, it happens no matter what. Um, and they're, they're going to want to do it, and they're going to make try to make a very compelling case for it. And I think that, honestly, what you need to go in saying is no. Just no budget, uh, no tuition hike. They're going to fight for that, and you have to, be, you have to fight back. Um, and at the very least, then you can give them a the compromise, and it won't be the full legal. The current um, are students represented adequately currently in terms of budget planning and the second part of this how do you So I'd like to start by saying, you know, I'm not gonna sit up here and try to say that the budget planning committee, you know, that they're not doing what they're doing for the best interest of the institution. You know, they are. They're just looking at the numbers, they're looking at what they have to work with, and they're trying to do what's best for the institution. Here's where the slight problem is. It's when you have to realize that what really makes up this institution is the student body. The students who go here and the students who will come here. Students will not go here as much and students will stop coming here as much if this tuition keeps going up. So I think that as a president sitting on this committee, you really have to be a strong advocate, like Jerry was saying. And you do have to be a little aggressive. Respectful, but aggressive. And you have to realize that the more you try to push to find other ways to you know, fund the institution without having to increase tuition is only going to be for the betterment of the student body. <laughs> and to talk about you know, prior knowledge of how the you know, entire university's budget works and all the insides and outs of that, I can tell you one thing. I'm a fast learner, and I think it's better to have no preconceived notions of how you feel about certain parts of the budget, no preconceived notions of how things have been handled, you know, two years ago or three years ago, and go in there with the information that they will provide you, with the information you find on your own, the information that then you can then go off of and say, this is what I see, you know, why am I wrong? Or this is what I see, this is what the everyday student would then see. Why wouldn't they be able to see it right? So I think if I go in there with my own knowledge of get, taking what they give me, with learning, you know, what I can find online, and through the proper resources, I'd go in there with the everyday student's perspective and be able to represent them better. All right, moving on, uh, the college Dems have asked this, and they ask it every year, but what could students have to do um, to encourage more, uh, more students to get out and vote? Um, not just for student elections, but also in November in uh, the March primaries, um, where we've seen historically low turnout in non-presidential years. But even more broadly, what, what role does the students have in encouraging student engagement, um, whether that is in having them pick up the post every day, which they should be doing, um, or whether that's, whether that's voting in student senate elections, or voting in presidential elections, or paying attention to current events nationally at the state level, at whatever level, so anyone from you? Um, I think the big first step in getting students to vote more is just make it really accessible for them. Like, I vote when I'm down here, I'm registered down 
in here, but I think it's scary. I don't understand, you know, sometimes all of the bills that are trying to be passed, and I don't want to vote one way or the other and be wrong or make the wrong choice for me. So I think that really student senate could, you know, we should do some sort of program, some sort of info session, just breaking down what the legislation would be, who you're voting for, what it means. Just make it easier for students, black and white, this is what this bill is about. If you vote this, it will have this repercussion. If you vote this, it will have that repercussion. Just because <coughs> I feel a lot of the reason why students down here don't vote, vote is because it's intimidating. Their parents aren't down here to kind of guide them. It's scary. I just feel like if we get more knowledge out there and just let students know exactly what they would be voting for, I think that there would be a way bigger voter turnout. I'll take this one. Um, when it comes to what student citizens are already doing, um, Liz, good news, student senate every year does put out a voter guide to people. Uh, obviously not well published, not well put out there. That's a problem. That's not an education problem, that's a PR problem. Um, and I think something Omrit's going to definitely work on is making sure our PR is stepped up. I think they've done a decent job this year. I think they can improve. And I think we do that by making better connections with media outlets, working with the Post, working with local media outlets, but also working with hopefully larger uh, outlets um, in Columbus and stuff. And I think by doing that, we need to entice students to be involved. Um, it may be scary, but it's our duty as citizens to vote. Because if we don't vote, what say do we have then when we leaders, uh, leaders do the things we don't like? I think some of the things we can entice, bring debates here. OU is a beautiful campus, and believe it or not, there's been quite a few presidents that have visited OU. Why not bring a, uh, a governor's debate to Mamad, or a U.S. Senate debate, or even a vice presidential debate? Those are the things that not only attract the positive image we want to project, but it also attracts students' interest in the issues itself. So let's be creative, let's think outside the box, and I want to do it definitely. Right. Yeah, I, I, he touched on uh, you know, general elections, I can touch on student senate elections. Um, the reason, we, we get a lot of criticism from the other two tickets for uh, being annoying and being out there, um, but the reason we do that is so people vote. Uh, and as the past years have shown, it doesn't matter how much you annoy them, they do vote, and that's the only way to get out to them. And I, I say this repeatedly, I say this to Zach, I say this to Evan, having Twitter, having Facebook, all that fun stuff, having a website, that's a great way to let people come to your message. Being out there is the only way to get your message out there. Increased turnout because because knowledge is one thing, but then actually getting the result is something else. Um, how do you do that? Um, and we'll start with you, and you guys can also respond if you. Oh, okay. We you talked about the general election. You know, you said the college Dems asked this. I think you know the college Democrats and the college Republicans and any other political you know organization on this campus should be taking a large part of this uh, awareness program. You know, getting people signed up and getting the information out there. Um, I definitely agree with Liz that you know. That you know we do need to put more people out there. However, evidence is exactly right. Student Senate does do a great job, and I actually you know, registered to vote through Student Senate, uh, through the people on Senate, and got information on many of the ballot initiatives this past November, um, you know, from Student Senate. And the thing is, though, is kind of exactly what Evan was saying about PR. Is what Student Senate really needs to be doing is changing the way they use the <coughs> communications on Senate. We would do this by restructuring the community communications aspect of Student Senate by making a communications director who is in charge of all communications. Stemming from a communications director, have a press secretary. This person is solely in charge of dealing with the press. 
They give the press the information they need. They're always there for the press to contact. And they have that sole job in order to get tied down in other PR you know, operations. Then, stemming from the communications director the other way, is your actual PR staff. Now, as PR staff, it's going to attract a lot more people from Scripps who they don't have to worry about you know, talking to the media, talking to the press, you know, doing all this and that, writing everything up. They can really just work on PR projects. That's what they're there for. And commissions will be able to utilize them with a more timely basis. And I think that, you know, when you talk about voter turnout, that would be one of those projects they could do. And as far as student senate elections go, the way to get more voter turnout in a student senate election is I'm going to try to. You do need to get your face out there. But at the same time, you need to understand that that way of campaigning has driven a lot of little people I know the past few years away from not voting at all. So I'm not saying that it's the way of campaigning that is the reason for people not voting, but it has been a reason that people have told me, which is why we tried something different, and hopefully we'll see a better voter turnout this Thursday, no matter you know what the results are. Yeah, go on. first, if I could just uh, address the student senate campaign aspect. Um, I think the reason why students don't come out to vote is A, they don't know what it is or what's going on, and B, there's been a lot of lackluster campaigns in the past, I think, four years. I think you either have a really strong campaign and then you usually have a weaker campaign. So people don't really see the idea that it's a competition of ideals and candidates. They see it more as just a celebration of an organization. So I think that needs to be clarified. But when it comes to voter registration, I think we're not giving the due respect that needs to go to college gems, college Republicans. They do register a lot of people. I think what we can do, though, is instead of them trying to uh, both set up separate efforts, why don't we, as Student Senate, as a nonpartisan body, say, why don't the three of us work together? Why don't we use all of our combined resources and get students registered to vote? I also think it would be interesting for um, you know, different majors, different uh, schools within our university to make it a project. Um, utilize our academics, make it an academic um, function uh, or, or more of a civic function which flows directly into the five C's. So use, uh, incorporating our uh, nonpartisan stance between the two, trying to work together. I think utilizing different majors, different schools, use making an academic function. And I think lastly, bringing big events like vice presidential debates are something that students are going to get excited about. And I think it also puts a good image out for OU. Um, when it comes to the general election, which I think is probably the more interesting to talk about right now, I think registration is going to be extremely important. Uh, uh, I also, I do know some students that don't feel comfortable voting in Athens, they'd rather vote in their hometown. And so we need to make it apparent to them, you know, like, tell them how the absentee process works. Because uh, while I'd like them to vote in Athens because it feels nice to vote where you live, not everyone wants to do that. Some people do it for very specific reasons. So if they want to vote absentee, we can also help them through that process. I actually really like Evan's idea of bringing the other, the college students to college Republicans to just say, we want to have just people participating in our democracy. I mean, when it comes to the student senate itself, the election's almost over. We all chose different ways to campaign. At some point, we just say that's how we did it. We're going to move into closing statements because I kept this room for like half an hour too long already. Um, we'll go in the reverse order of how we started. So, let's start with how each of you guys can work your way back, back this way. Yeah, we'll make it very simple for everyone. I mean, I think the arguments tonight have finally truly been laid out before the students of Ohio University, finally. Um, I encourage everyone to go check out our platform, check out our website, check out our Twitter account, our Facebook, our YouTube, um, and really get educated on the issues and what REACH as a ticket stands for. And I think it's an easy decision after doing that. So uh, please vote REACH uh, this Thursday. Do check out Reach's page though, because they're really good at lip syncing to call me, maybe. It was, it was really good. So, you know, that's, that's worth checking out. Um, but yeah, you know, I promise to fight for students at every turn, and I've said it before, and I guess that's all I can say now. You know, like Jared, I don't want to say it to vote for me either. I'd like to say to vote for you, and that's why we made that name. We're running for you, and that kind of can sound corny, but. That's why I made the name, so I might as well throw it out there at one to me. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done it yet. I might as well do it once. Uh, and like everyone else said, this debate's gotten really good, at least getting out some issues, uh, no matter where you stand. Um, at least, you know, the people that are here, you are more informed. Uh, most of you are probably already informed beforehand. But hopefully the media does a great job of getting the messages out. And there are a lot of good things said. So this Thursday is the election. You know, you all probably will vote. Tell your friends to vote. You know, tell your friends to check out all of the resources that you know, the candidates up here put out 
so that they can be better informed and make a good vote on uh, Thursday. And of course, I will end by saying that I would love your vote uh, for myself, for Liz, for the entire E party. And uh, thank you very much for coming out. But with that said, I want to thank all the candidates. Thanks for running, um, both yourselves and for your whole tickets. Um, someone's got to be our student leaders, and I appreciate that we have people who are eager and willing um, to do that. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. As always, make sure to pick up the paper tomorrow. There will be tons of coverage, as well as online. As always, www.thepost.ohio.edu. Follow us on Twitter, at The Post. Um, but with that said, um, hopefully you all vote this, this week, and thanks again for coming out.